Cross it. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. In this video, we're going to cover the carbapenems and the monobactams, or the one monobactam. So the reason I group them together is honestly, monobactam isn't that important. I mean, we need to talk about it, but we're going to spend almost all of our time talking about the carbapenems, and I'll explain why in just a little bit. So you see why they're related. They're both beta-lactam antibiotics, just like the penicillins and the cephalosporins we've already covered, which means they have that beta-lactam ring, that same penicillin nucleus, basically. Then they have their different side groups and different structure, which makes them behave differently. So uh, as far as the, the only important monobactam, really the only one that's used, is astreonam, uh, which is called azactam, I believe. Um, it is narrow spectrum, and I'd say the, the reason that this is still very important and worth noting here is that it's effective against pseudomonas. So one thing, one, you know, pseudom, we'll talk about the drug-resistant organisms in future series, but uh, pseudomonas is one of the, the really most terrifying ones. When I think of like these nightmare bacteria, pseudomonas comes to mind, like in the lab, when we're testing the effectiveness of antibiotics, I always have the students tested against Pseudomonas because I want to see um, how it works, right? So it's, it's relatively important. But let's talk about the carbapenems. So there's a, there are a variety of different semi-synthetic carbapenems. You've got imipenem is the one we'll talk about the most, uh, miropenem, and, and doropenem. So these uh, are, are very broad spectrum which means they've been used a lot, right? So one of, the, one of the ways that antibiotics have been used, and you could argue misused, is the more broad spectrum an antibiotic is, the more likely it was to be used, especially early. If you don't know what someone has, you would do kind of a shotgun approach. So the good news and bad news about broad spectrum antibiotics, right? They can be useful, but that means you're going to be using them so often and exposing so many microbes to them and, and forcing so many bacteria to, a, uh, to evolve around them in their presence that you're going to see resistance. And this is is where we're at, you know, a pretty pretty scary situation. So the carbapenems that you know they're still they're still uh, primarily effective. Um, they do have the broadest spectrum of any of the beta lactam antibiotics we talked about. That's a key thing to remember. Uh, they can still kill some of your gram negatives, and they are also um, resistant to the beta lactamase enzymes that would that would that would destroy penicillin pretty easily. But here, uh, so let me give you an example, and we'll talk about the problem. So my favorite example is called Premaxin. So this is going to be an imipenem antibiotic. So it has to be injected, but then you're you're going to add something called psilostatin to it, or psilostatin, some would say. Um, the reason you do that is this is an effective antibiotic, but it breaks down in the kidneys like uber fast. So here you see an example of a, of a combination, not of two antibiotics, but an antibiotic and a compound that makes it more effective. So what psilostatin does is keeps it in circulation so it can work longer instead of just being instead of being filtered out of the kidneys. Um, at this point, um, Premaxin, this imipenem antibiotic, is still effective against a you know well over 90% of the, the organisms that are isolated from hospitals. So this, you can see this being a very powerful antibiotic. But the, when I think of antibiotics, I think of basically every antibiotic has a counter. And every time you use it, that number is, is getting lower. And when it gets to zero, the, the drugs aren't going to be useful anymore, like what happened with methicillin. So it's still, it's very effective if you're trying to save lives today. But the reality is we will reach a point where this antibiotic is not near as effective. Like uh, three years ago, four years ago, I would have said this is effective against 98% of organisms in the hospital. I think that number is, is slowly starting to drop. Uh, so why does this matter so much? Well, you, maybe, you, maybe you've never heard of it, but if you go to Google or whatever, if you type in nightmare bacteria, or if you look at you know some of the biggest concerns that the CDC has when it comes to antibiotic resistance, they are going to be the CRE organisms, carbapenem resistant enteriobacteriaceae. I'll spell the, I'll spell that on the screen. It has lots of vowels, right? But these the these enteriobacteriaceae. This is a large family of an, of, of, of organisms. So you're looking at Shigella. Uh, Klebsiella, E. coli, uh, Pseudomonas, these kind of organisms. Uh, the, that group of organisms, when they become resistant to carbapenems, we're basically like out of antibiotic options or almost out of them. Because if, you, if you're if you carbapenem resistant, then you're, then you're resistant to the other beta-lactam antibiotics we've talked about. So these are all superbugs, which means they're resistant to more than one type of drug. Um, some of these CRE organisms are resistant to every antibiotic we have except for one called colistin, which I'll cover in a separate video. Here's the big concern. If the CRE organisms, which already exist, become colistin resistant, then we will not have an antibiotic to treat them unless something new comes along the line. So we, we do, and we do know that there are some organisms that are resistant to colistin. So if you take an organism that's resistant to the carbapenems and it learns how to become colistin resistant from the organisms that already exist, 
then you might you might truly have a situation where we have microbes where there is no treatment. I mean, there's already some untreatable strains, but we're talking about huge families of anab of organisms that our antibiotics won't work against again anymore. So when people are talking about this kind of doomsday scenario, like what would the world look like without antibiotics? That's what we're talking about: CRE organisms that become resistant to their the last line of defense, which is a polymyxin E or or colistin. So this, this is very terrifying. At this point, if someone gets a CRE infection like in their bloodstream, even with treatment, half of them are going to die. Like this, this is definitely a big, big concern. So I'd say the main reason to understand the carbapenems is their significance now. But as organisms start to resist them, we are, we are really, really uh, in trouble unless we can come up with new antibiotics or antibiotic alternatives. And I, I'm, I'm an optimist. We're, we're going to stay ahead of the situation. But this is, this is a big concern. All right, so those these are the, la the last groups of beta-lactam antibiotics I wanted to cover, the monobactams, and then more importantly, the carbapenem antibiotics. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.